The Crit Show contains elements of horror, fantasy violence, and adult language. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Hey everybody, Rev here. Before we get into this week's episode, I want to take a moment to thank our new patrons who joined us in the month of February. Michael Owens, Quentin Yendel, Deshaun Mitchell, Fabian Cooney, Jonathan M., Lucy Liu, Mike Mead, Liam Harris, Alchemist Josh, Ted Garner, Shelby Herbert, David DiPaolo, Dune Mog, and Anthony, please destroy my last name, <laughs> Red... <laughs> Red... <laughs> uh, Radicinio. Red... No, that's not... Radicinio... Wish granted, <laughs> Anthony. Uh, so thank you to the new patrons who joined us this month. And thank you to all of you who join us every month. We literally could not do this without you. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. If you are interested in joining our Patreon, again, you can go over to patreon.com slash the crit show. Tiers start at just $1 and get you access to the most aggressively welcoming discord on the internet. Uh, and at the $5 level, there are hundreds of hours of content, and an ad-free feed. Uh, so thank you once again, and enjoy the episode. It is bright and early, as you are all riding across the barrens of Lost Hope, following the rune compass that Rev has created towards your destination. The environment out here is harsh in sort of a new way. Um, you know, it is still prohibitively hot. It is very dry. But there is also just this kind of not haze, but almost a mirage that hangs in the air everywhere from just the sheer volume of this corruption that exists on this side of the anvil. It's not like it's making you dizzy or anything, but it is just palpable out here. You can tell why this is so broadly uninhabited, at least by regular human folk. As you ride, you can see skeletons of towns and buildings off in the distance in various directions. Occasionally, you can see a smoke trail wafting up into the air a ways off. And I think just a couple hours into your ride, you all spot a somewhat familiar tableau. Off in the distance, just in the middle of nothing, you see a little campfire and a little lean-to and a figure sitting near a bubbling cauldron. Ricketts! No way. It's Ricketts! He's alive! Ah, he's alive! I'm gonna ride up. You ride that direction and you see Jedediah Ricketts familiar, familiarly sitting <laughs> under his lean to. You're just, gonna, you're just gonna go with that one? I'm gonna go with that one. What's, yeah. That's how the sausage gets made. <laughs> sitting uh, under his little lean to, uh, just kind of hunched over, stirring his cauldron, uh, and he pays. Making, making sausage. <laughs> he, yeah, making sausage <laughs> and paying you very little mind as you approach, save for just an acknowledging grunt. What in the hell are you doing all the way out here, Master Ricketts? I told you I wander. Yeah, this is just, this is some wandering. This It's dangerous out here. He gives a sort of dismissive grunt. And that's why you've survived. That that whole thing, that whole vibe is so good. I'm, I'm very jealous and in awe and appreciative. I, I want to be like that when I grow up. Jess, I got bad news for you. Hmm? We're very old. No. Anyway. <laughs> Never too old to be a, a crotchety old hermit. That's fair. We are not at crotchety old hermit age yet. No, not yet. Yeah, not age. <laughs> <laughs> Why out here? He shrugs. Felt right. Seemed like place to be. Come across y'all again. Seems more than accurate. Well, all right. What's been going on out here? Have you seen anything interesting? Anything unusual? Noteworthy? He finally looks up at you standing over him and furrows his brow and he looks back at his cauldron and starts reaching into his pack uh, and grabbing assorted things and tossing them in and stirring and again you see the smoke shift colors and the consistency of the cauldron change and i'm going yes 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 as he says hoot and holler belly crawler weed of buck and silver dollar venom of a rattlesnake Barking irons and T-bone steak. 
jangling spurs and chilly tasting, varmint hunt and bullet casing. Something slithers o'er my grave. Someone hither need be saved. Oh my God. I love this. I think we're saying that out loud because we were not <laughs> present for the last time Ricketts did one of these. I just give them all a look over my shoulder like, that was fucking cool, wasn't it? <laughs> He's a poet. It's incredible. Jake, did you write that one? I know you didn't write I, the I last one. I did write one. that one. Oh, yeah. you're amazing. That oh. was really so well done. done. All right. All right. So what now? Yeah, you were too, you had to listen. You were cheering him on, but you didn't catch what he said. Did I you? was vibing. No, somebody <gasps> needs saved. Yeah, yeah. That, the, somebody the needs saved from a belly crawler. Yeah, so big snake or scorpion. Yeah, they are kind of belly. They're yeah. like belly. They're low riders. They are the low rider of the, <laughs> the animal <insect>. kingdom, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Scuttlers, right? Yeah. Well, scuttler is the. Oh, he's the big one. Like he's the named one. Ricketts chimes in. He says, I think y'all are taking some of that a little bit too literal. Some of that's just the magic words and the ingredients no, that I'm throwing here. in the cauldron. There's one thing we've learned. It's sticking time. <laughs> and I where can we pardon. find and where can we find this T bone steak? <laughs> oh, out here I don't know. Oh wait. He reaches in his pack and he pulls out a raw T bone <laughs> oh steak. My gosh. And he throws it on a very hot, flat rock that he's got sitting near him. <laughs> I thought he was gonna up. say he throws the whole thing into his cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> throws the whole thing just into his mouth. He unhinges his jaw and swallows it whole. He's like, I'm a snake. Mm-mm, tasty. And then he slithers away. <laughs> It was me. (laughs) (laughs) The the image of a human being slithering away like a snake, too, is so clear in my mind. (laughs) There's a cartoon I'm very specifically thinking of where a character always has, like, big cartoon steaks that they just throw into their mouth and spit out the tea of the T-bone. It seems like the dog that uh, always beats up on... Tom, Tom and Tom and Jerry. Yeah. Does that dog have a name? I feel yes. like that dog has a that name. That dog has a name. It did. It's Bruce. Yeah, it's, or... it begins with a B-R, I think. B- Br- Brutus or? No, y- Brutus. Butch. Maybe. Let's think of other names. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> what, are, what are other, <laughs> what are other good names, names for strong dogs? <laughs> <laughs> If I've learned anything from our Discord, the comments that come in are not going to be about the content of the episode. Other than that, it's just going to be full of <laughs> yeah. good names. Good names for, for strong dogs. For strong dogs. <laughs> I I found the name. Do we do you want it, or yeah. do you want me to give yeah, you yeah, like yeah. a were guessing we, game were situation? Were we, were we right? Here? You just want the name, no guessing. Yeah. Spike. Damn oh. it. Oh. oh, like the collar. Yeah. That was gonna. That was gonna be my my hint. Was think yeah. about the collar. Anyway. Yeah. So someone <laughs> needs saved. Oh, right. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's been too late. <laughs> we have wasted a lot of time. So which um which potato piece or whatever in there is will tell you who needs saved? He moves his comically oversized wooden spoon around hunting for the appropriate piece and he lifts out a particular piece of potato and then he eats it. And he says, mm, they're about done. Okay. <sighs> Do you know where nearby they need saving? A direction for us to go? Don't really work like that, I'm afraid. I got what I got. Uh, And he kind of casts his gaze around the horizon. Can't be too far, though, or else I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be getting the visions. Okay. (gasps) Have you seen any runes? Huh? Uh, Like like this. Uh, And I'll just draw some examples of the runes that we're looking for in the dirt. Uh Uh-uh. Ain't been here that long, though. Let's take a look around just kind of on the horizon how he's looking around to see if there's anything unusual or if there's any strange smells in the area <laughs> other than the stew. Yeah, why don't you read a situation? <laughs> Try to block out the stew. Seven. All right, you get one question. Uh, what should I be on the lookout for? You can see a column of smoke rising up from like a little ways over the horizon and a little bit not exactly back the direction you came from, like towards the tracks, but like following the arc back towards the border between Lost Hope and the Jackalope Flats. And I think you can just see like the crowns of some buildings, what looks like it's probably a ghost town over there. But clearly somebody is in there with a fire burning. We may have already actually passed it. There's a, a fire burning in those you know, those collapsed buildings over there. Well, it's certainly worth going to take a look. Come on, Ricketts. And I throw him over my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. you don't want to come with? Not again. Okay. It's stew time. 
it's dude, I just put all this rattlesnake venom and T bone steak in here. I need to eat it all up. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> hey, how did you get here ahead of did you come through the mountains? This is what I've been wondering because we only just now got here and we were like on a train for but we, most of this journey. But we also went all the way out to the edge and back. Like yeah, he could have passed in that time. On foot? Uh he just smirks a little, but he continues gazing at and stirring his cauldron. That that's it. That's the vibe. That's like the picture, that's the snapshot of the vibe. I'm going to get there. It'll take me it'll take me a little bit. I'm going to get there. I promise. All right. We'll see you later. And uh I'm going to turn the horse. All right. You all are able to change course uh, and start heading back towards the smoke column that Rev has spotted. What's the approach? How big is this kind of settlement, for lack of a better word? Like, is this something we think we could split up and surround and come at from different angles? Or would that take, like, a lot of time? No, that wouldn't take a lot of time. It seems like it's humble town-sized. Like, it's not a metropolis or anything. Um, There are a few roads that kind of crisscross and have the remains of these structures among them. But the difference between all of you just like riding in from one point of access or you all splitting up and coming in from different sides would be a matter of like literally a couple of minutes, probably. You could ride a perimeter around this whole town in like three minutes. Okay, uh, I think we should split up just in case something tries to ambush us. You want to split up in case we get ambushed, but then we're alone if we get ambushed. Yeah, but if one of us is alone, we're more likely to draw them out if they're trying to attack us. And we want that. Yeah, well, rather they attack us than, like, that guy. But also, if they're focused on one of us, they won't see the rest of us. Velociraptor rules. Oh, okay. I can't wait for after this adventure, Landara and Rev to get together and just, like, share notes of being like, that crew is just, like, a shit show in terms of <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason that they're the D team. <laughs> so glad we're back together. <laughs> Let's go run our very efficient missions. (laughs) All right. So we've got one person going right, one person going left. I assume that means one person going forward and one person going back. Yeah, yeah, of course. One person leaving. Up, down, A, B. Um, I'll come in from underneath. (laughs) Is Jumbo with us? I mean, of course he is. Jumbo's always with us. Of course he's. Yeah, he's always here. Yeah. I think he has to be on uh, your horse, doesn't he? (laughs) Yeah, my horse is the biggest and the broadest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so when you say you're going right and left, um, what part of town are you coming into on the compass? I'll I'll go all the way around and come in from opposite side where we're at now. So somebody should come with me and break off. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, so compass-wise, Kim and Jumbo will be coming in from the southwest. Tass will be northeast. I will be southeast, and Rev will be northwest. Okay. Great. Let's do this. All right, so Kim and Jumbo would be the first to kind of breach the edge of town here uh, since you are just heading in on a straight path you don't have to loop out and around so the road ahead of you splits into like a left fork and a right fork that seem to kind of wrap up and around and maybe meet again in the middle for the main thoroughfare of this town how do you want to approach what are you looking for how do you proceed i suppose i'm Checking either path for like footprints or hoof prints to see where uh, the guy who made the fire went. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, read a situation. I rolled a six. Could I invoke my twist of being plagued by visions? I get a vision of the path that the stranger took. I buy that. Okay. Uh, okay. So go ahead and spend your point of grit. That'll bump you up to a seven, which will get you one question. What should I be on the lookout for? All right. So you are keeping an eye out for tracks um, and this sort of haze of corruption washes in front of your eyes. And for a moment, it kind of resolves in a useful way. This is sort of a, a blend of what you're seeing with your eyes and what you see in a vision. Not exactly the past, but almost like uh, almost like detective vision, like you know, highlighting nice. things that you might not have otherwise been able to see. And you see an assortment of tracks leading down both of these paths, more faintly off in other directions, like other roads that lead into and out of this town. Despite seeming to be abandoned, it's clear that this is actually fairly well-traveled. And moreover, you can see that there are boot prints, there are hoof prints, there are also paw prints, there are what look like 
claw marks in the ground. A lot of different types of being seem to have made their way through here and along these paths. But overall, as far as the traffic is concerned, they seem to converge closer to that main thoroughfare, closer to the center of town. Okay, I'm going to cautiously start leading Virgil in that direction and say to Jumbo, Jumbo, I'm pretty sure that this abandoned town isn't quite so abandoned. Well, I mean, we know that there's folks out here, even if they ain't human folks, but they need somewhere to be staying, so maybe they just take up in any old structure they can find. Yeah, makes sense. I saw uh, footprints and paw prints. Oh, like a doggy? Mm, think a bit bigger than that, I think. Oh, like a big doggy? Sure, buddy. Like a Marmaduke. <laughs> Another universal constant. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's in all the newspapers out here. I love that big silly dog. He thinks he's people. Yeah, that tracks. <laughs> so you are cautiously leading Virgil in. Are you trying to break line of sight or anything? You're trying to stay undercover as you head in? Uh, No, I think I'm just riding in. All right. So as Kim and Jumbo make their way in from the southwest, let's jump over to Rev and Tass. Uh, you are circling out and around the town. Rev would be stopping off sooner. Are you guys looking for any particular, like, landmarks, points of entry, anything specific to make your entry? Is there anything up around the town, like, blocking if you were just to try to go into any any spot? You mean, like, geographically? Yeah. Like a, like a cliffside or a hill or anything? Mm -hmm. No, it is, it is quite flat and blasted out here. Um, then, yeah, I really will just kind of wait until it seems like we are a quarter hour past where we left Kim on the clock and go in there. Tass, same for you? Yep. And Megan, over on your side of town, is there anything particular you're doing other than trying to time this out? I want to look at the remains of the buildings around and see if I can catch a glimpse of any movement or uh, anything that would indicate somebody might be on the lookout. Okay. Uh, why don't you also read a situation? Seven. You get one question. What's my enemy's true position? You also can see that the main road splitting the heart of this town is more or less an east-west road. So you're not looking straight down it. You're kind of peeking the angles between buildings as you approach. And you can see that column of smoke again, and you can finally get eyes on where exactly it's coming from. It's coming from one of the buildings on the north side of this road, like right in the middle of town. It looks like it's probably a saloon. And there is a chimney that has this smoke wafting out of it. But I think you notice as you approach, a shadow passes by on the ground and you look up, you see a raven flying overhead and it does a short loop and then flies down and settles in one of the buildings on the opposite side of the street from the saloon, a couple buildings down. And I think you get the impression that the saloon is a honeypot, that that is bait trying to get somebody to approach it because it will look like the inhabited structure. But that raven is reporting to somebody. Most likely every building here has somebody in it keeping an eye out. But those people want to lead you into the saloon. Realizing this and subtly worrying that somebody else is going to get to the saloon before me and not realize it's a trap, I think almost reflexively I want to try and reach out telepathically and warn my friends. So as far as weird level goes, influencing a creature with human intelligence is level two. Um, which, you know, I don't think this is. You are simply communicating. But are you trying to hit all of them at once? Yeah. So I think that would that would bump it back up a little bit. I think we'll call this weird level two. Uh, just real quick, if you look at four, it gives specifically. Oh, fuck yeah, it absolutely does. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rev. Sorry. Teacher, I'm, teacher, look, you I'm forgot to assign I'm just homework. Saying, hopefully we're all smarter than ravens. <laughs> Uh, thank you, my little teacher's pet. You can choose any <laughs> eraser from the jar. Uh, have a grit, Rev. <laughs> <laughs> have, have a grit, and I'm going to get you an extra brownie at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. On the chart, level four is to communicate telepathically with the weird users you share a bond with, uh, which is about the most definite use of going weird we've had in this entire game. <laughs> That's literally the thing you want to do. true. Uh, so, go weird at level four. Six. Woo! Uh, do you have any aspects you can invoke that you could spend a grit to bump it up? Jake just gave me a grit if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think this is perfect. Uh, my issue is 
I'll spread myself too thin trying to protect everyone. Fabulous. Uh, Go ahead and spend a grit. Bump that up to a seven. So you reach out telepathically uh, and are able to reach the minds of your compatriots. The fire, the fire is coming, coming from the saloon, saloon in the center, the center of town, but it's it's, it's a, a trap. trap. They, they want, want us in there, there but, but there's, there's people, people in all the houses, houses watching. watching. Holy shit. Yeah, 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 you scared, scared the, the shit, shit out of me. Hey, Megan. <laughs> I just realized that there's a raven flying overhead and it's reporting back to, to a building, but try not to look too obviously, but we're being watched from everywhere. Cool. Uh, I noticed a lot of, there's a lot of people here. And specifically, I think it's werewolves. Okay. So if the middle building is a trap and there's people waiting, do we think based on what Rickett says that there's actually somebody here to save? If there's somebody in danger, it's most likely because they fell into this trap. They, they went into the saloon. I don't know if going in there with the knowledge that it's a trap will give us enough of a leg up to defend ourselves. But we may need to go in there to save whoever's in trouble. And Megan, as you are maintaining this Mental chat line, getting this information out to your squad. Your focus is spread too thin. You are not paying sufficient attention to your surroundings. And I don't think you notice the sound of a mechanical uh, until you look up and see a large net flying at you from one of the buildings on the edge of town. My initial reaction would be to like put my hands up to try and block in between me and this net. But because I'm using my mind to speak to everyone, I think I do the same thing, but mentally. So I want to go weird and try to telekinesis this net to stop before it hits me. Okay. I think this will be just a weird level two uh, to stop this inanimate object. But I do think that it is opposed. Um, So take a minus one on that because you are working against the person who fired this net. Eight. All right, Uh, you throw your hands up and you freeze this net in place, but you are stuck here. As long as you've got your hands up, you're stopping this net from moving. But if you you drop them, it's going to continue with the same momentum in your direction. You've almost put like a time hold on it rather than just stopping it dead. That's great. I think out loud, I'm just like, ah! You all hear Megan. Uh shout panickedly from her side of town. You hear me in your head and then you hear me out of your head. (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna get my horse moving at a gallop in that direction. Guns out. And I'll uh, have my pistols as well. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, you tear your sleeves off first. Yep. Yeah, I don't even know that Tass and I have necessarily had much time to get any distance between us as we both start heading into town. Probably not as much as you intended. Yeah. yeah. More like a more like a 45 degree difference between you rather than a 90 degree difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, again with the main road being just a, an east-west road, you know, you'd both be kind of approaching off axis. Do you two want to like line up and follow the main road into town or do you want to try and like cut through the buildings, like come in perpendicular to that road or even like loop all the way out and around to come in from the direction Megan was coming in? I think I'd be trying to cut through the buildings by what she just said, that they're like watching, you know, the saloon. I I have this thought that they're more like zeroed in on the main roads and people traveling up to that building. So maybe they won't be watching the side alleys and stuff uh, with as much detail. Okay, why don't you read a situation? Seven. You get one question. What's my best way in? Bearing in mind that there are people in basically every building and that that saloon at the middle is where they're trying to bait you, your best way in is probably around to not cut through the buildings, to not broach that main thoroughfare, but to cut a loop around the outside of all of this because they are watching out, but in is probably like the kill box. Okay, so I really get going full gallop, just continuing on my path to uh, stay right at the edges and uh, make my way around to where she went in. Boy, I think seeing Tass suddenly away from me, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to go to the main road and try to make a beeline towards Megan so she's alone the least amount of time. Okay. Kim, you also hear Megan shout. You hear thundering hoof beats. It seems like your other two companions are traveling at quite a clip. What do you want to do? Well, if I'm already 
in town, I feel like I'm the closest to Megan right now. So I would ride to where she is. Okay. And again, do you want to do so via the main thoroughfare or do you want to loop out and back around the buildings? What do I think would be the quickest way to Megan? From your position, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Then I think I would be trying to move as stealthily as I can. So Kim and Tass sort of circling the outside edges of the town, pushing towards Megan. You certainly start to hear some commotion within town. You can hear people moving within the buildings you are near. I think you also hear some shouts start to go up, and you see figures in windows as you go by, and the glint of the metal of firearms. But Rev, as you start to cruise down this main road, you see the same in kind. But you also hear gunshots start to ring out in your direction. Why don't you give me a ride roll to see if you can safely carve this path? Uh-huh. And this is going to be opposed, so take a minus one. <laughs> and ride is uh, body. Ride, yeah, body plus ride. Perfect. Eight. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as you tear towards town down the main road, shots ringing out on either side, bullets whizzing past you. From every structure, every building that you go by. It's like triggering a poison dart trap in an old temple. (laughs) And miraculously, none of these bullets strike you on your person. But one of them perfectly clips the strap that holds your rifle on your back. And it falls and clatters away in the middle of the road in the middle of town. But the three of you from three points start to converge and you can all see Megan sitting atop a horse hands up in the air, and a massive net just frozen in space between her and the building closest to her. I can't let go of it. It'll it'll keep coming. It'll hit me. Uh, I want to reach into my pack and pull out a lasso. I want to uh, use a, a charge and swing it around and try to loop it around the edge of this floating net and yank it down. Okay. Mark your equipment charge and give me a rope roll. God, I hope that's body. It is. What's a three do for me? <laughs> was that snake eyes? Yep. Sure was. You pull out a lasso and you start to swing it around. And again, you're real focused <laughs> on on which point of this net you're going to hit. That You also don't notice the mechanical sound of a ch- 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 <laughs> thwip, And a net fucking catches you and just... I mean, basically stops you dead in place as your horse continues running out from under you. (laughs) And you land on the ground entangled. I want to channel some magic at the net that Megan has suspended, some force magic to try to push it away. Okay. I think this will just be going weird at level two, but I think you're going to take a minus one on this roll uh, because you're without your your wand, basically. Your your gun wand. (gasps) Oh, no. More snakes? Four. Woo! Hey, that's one more than me. <laughs> We're nailing good, it today. Good job. They get us all in nets and they're like, this was the easiest <laughs> catch we've ever had. What is it? I hope this is a crew of werewolves that captures the team again. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to get the founders to come into this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that you you get it backwards. You just rip this net towards you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you also, you are still... On horseback, uh, the net over you and over your horse's like head and face, and it's starting to kind of thrash and panic as you are also entangled. Uh-huh. Kim, two of your squad are now <laughs> entangled. Megan is now free because the net that was threatening her uh, has been ripped onto <laughs> Rev. And the gunfire that was ringing out from either side of the street has slowed a bit, but you can hear the commotion of people trying to make their way now out of these buildings following your squad uh, to try and get position on them again. So you know that there are a lot of armed folks making their way towards you. You know that there is somebody firing a net gun who can see all of you quite clearly. (laughs) What would you like to do? And so Rev and his horse are like in a net together and the horse is like panicking. Correct. Rev is also still the most shootable. Having (laughs) having been the one... (laughs) Having met him. (laughs) (laughs) Having been the one to ride in through the town and make this fuck up from within the town. Uh, He is still like, he's on the edge of this main road, but he is still roughly within position, like between buildings. He could be shot at. Okay. I want to, yeah, and 
Tass is on the ground, so Tass would conceivably be a harder target for someone to shoot. Uh, I'm going to ride up to Rev and pull out my silver lasso and try to like lasso around Rev's torso and lead Rev and the horse somewhere where there is hopefully <laughs> fewer gunfire. Okay. Uh oh boy, this is like part ride, part rope. It's a lot. It's a lot of skills I'm not good at. Roll rodeo. Roll. Well, that's the combination of the two, right? <laughs> Special yeah. rodeo skill. I guess it's like what's the what's the harder thing here? Is it 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 sounds like you know, I mean, not getting shot is obviously, that's like a given, right? Yeah. Like we can assume that. So the objective here isn't to not get shot. It is to lasso Rev. So let's call this a rope roll. Sure. What's a six do for me? Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> do you have anything you could invoke or spend? Rev, say a nice thing about me. What? <laughs> say a nice thing about me. I, you, uh, uh, you don't, uh, you are... So beautiful. No, I, no I, I refuse to honor this. You didn't get caught in that. If, if anybody had organically complimented you, I might give you this. <laughs> Meta wise, I don't think you can go. Uh, praise me. I need positive reinforcement to perform. I do. I'm addicted I do. to flattery. I actually do. Oh, you called on the worst person too. Like I am the worst when someone's like. Hey, give me a compliment, and I'm like, oh. As soon as that's brought out, I don't I'm know so anything about you. Yeah. Oh, you're wearing shoes <laughs> real well. Good for you on the right feet, <laughs> man. Yeah, I I want so badly to invoke one of my aspects. I'm just not sure uh, unless it's you know me having a a vision of Rev's imminent death. I mean, you invoked the visions to track something. I think you could invoke the visions to see, like, the clearest way to approach the situation also. I, I also think that just the the visual of Rev's imminent death is happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's even less to do with the magic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, seven then. Okay. You ride by and whip this silver lasso out, wrap it around Rev, and are able to pull him and, by extension, his horse along with you. And the course that you're on, you just dive for the first closest avenue back out of here, which is an alley between a couple of the buildings. But as you get into it, you find that it is fenced at the far end, and this is a dead end. You are between a couple of the buildings. There are not windows that look into this alley, but you will have to make your way back out eventually. Megan, you are now unencumbered, which is more than can be said about half your team. Ooh, I think the gunshots are freaking me out uh, and seeing Tass and Rev get netted, I'm starting to panic a bit. Uh, I think I'm sticking true to my comfort and my abilities and I want to try to go weird and kick up just a bunch of dust in a huge dust devil around me and my team to try and obscure us from the vision of all the people who are shooting at us, hoping that they don't try to get us with nuts or bullets if they can't actually get eyes on us. Okay, so this is a telekinesis also? Yeah. I still think it is going to be a little bit higher, though, because this is a large-scale thing. Um, I would probably call this weird level four, actually, to kick up a big dust storm to mask all of you everywhere that you're split up in this town. Which, I mean, it's not like a huge radius, but it's still, you know, the scope of multiple buildings worth of space. So go weird at level four. Eight. All right. You kick up this big dust storm on your end of town and it engulfs you and your squad and the buildings and whoever's firing the net gun. You hear shouts and like orders and a bit of panic. You know that you are all obscured from the view of your attackers, but this dust storm is just as much a disadvantage for all of you. It's going to be hard to navigate. You can't see each other very well. You're not going to be able to hear each other quite so well. So you are out of sight, but you are all now also more isolated. Is this something that I'm going to have to keep focus on like I did with the net? No, not exactly. Like this isn't going to take your sole focus or action or anything. Um, I imagine that it is enough your effect that you could dispel it at some point. Like you are keeping it going because you are telekinesising the dust, but it's not like you can't do anything else while that's the case. I'd imagine this being kind of more in the, the back of your mind. Cool. You all hear boots thundering out of these buildings. 
uh, out into the street, into the midst of this dust storm. I think you all catch sight of some silhouettes occasionally, and you can hear them shouting back and forth to each other. They are out here, and they are looking for y'all. What do you want to do? I'm trying to get out of a net. Sure. How so? I'm trying to wiggle down to my boot knife to pull out and just saw at the end so that I can try to, uh, you know, get what is really the part that wraps around and, like, connects to uh, open up. Okay. I'll give you a choice here. Uh, You can either just, like, spend a little bit of extra time and just do this, presuming, like, nothing environmentally changes, uh, or you could give me a tracking survival roll, because I think, like, traps and nets would fall under that purview uh, to hit the the perfect point right now and immediately get out of this net. No guts, no glory. I think I gotta try to get out quickly because I can hear them running into the street. Okay, roll it. Six. Woo! Uh, I do have some grit, though. I I think this leans into the joke from another world. I know right where to cut, so I'm gonna spend a grit with my just knowledge of... uh, Having seen this done before? Yeah, sure, man. You've seen a lot of Westerns. <laughs> I seen, have. And a lot of cartoons. Yep. I sure have. So that's a seven. All right. You hit the perfect spot. You cut this net uh, and it falls away from you. You're able to stand. But as you do, you see two silhouettes closing in through this dust storm. Doesn't seem like they've got eyes on you yet, but they are clearly heading in your direction because you are the last fixed point that they knew of. Are they clearly not my teammates? They are clearly not your teammates. All right, I think I'm going to shoot. 14. I never need my plus three when I'm rolling to shoot. I need the plus three for other things, apparently. Okay, you fire a deft shot at the silhouette on the right, and it drops immediately. And you see the silhouette on the left stop and look down, uh, and for the moment, take pause here. What do you want to do? Shoot it. Okay. I don't think you need to roll that one. I think you've caught it off guard. It can't see you. So you fire another shot and you see that one drop as well. I'm going to scramble over and see who I just dropped. You crawl over there and you find two bodies that at a glance look like people. Their hats are now in the dust blowing away. Their clothes are in bad shape, very dirty. They look quite dirty and unkempt, but they had guns in their hands, which are now in the dirt next to them. If you want, I think you could investigate to see if you can glean anything additional. Yeah, I'm, I'm like looking for any clues of of if they might be more than just human. Okay, uh, so give me an investigate roll. I think this will be with tracking survival rather than investigate because I would consider this in the wild rather than a human settlement. Okay. Five. All right, as you are pouring over uh, the, the second body that you dropped, you know, looking for clues, trying to figure out if there's anything weird about these figures... Out of the corner of your eye, you see a little bit of movement, and you look over as the first body sits back up with this fresh bullet hole right through its head that you know you just made. Up close now, you can see that its eyes have rotted out. Its tongue seems like it's missing. Some of its flesh is decayed, but it just sits up almost mechanically and blinks over those empty sockets and turns to face you again. The Crit Show is a Crit Show Studios production, edited and produced by Brandon Wentz with music by Jake Purley. You can find more information about us at thecritshowpodcast.com. To keep up to date with upcoming live shows, contests, and other special events, follow us at The Crit Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For even more weekly content, join us at patreon.com slash thecritshow.